Good morning. So good to be with you. My name is Cherry. It's an honor to welcome you to our new modern service. Would you stand to your feet? And we're going to sing to the Lord together. faces here and those that are participating uh, through the live stream as well. My name is Chris. I'm the pastor here at Bethel, the interim pastor, and uh, this has been a project long in the making, and we're going to be launching a, a new service in August, and this is kind of what we call our soft launch, if you, or sneak preview. We're going to be doing several of these uh, throughout the summer. We are gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, one of the ancient traditions of the church and, and that we're bringing to our modern service is the sharing of the peace. And in ancient days, it was done with a kiss on the cheek. You guys aren't probably ready for that yet. So a, a, a holy handshake or a fist bump will suffice. 
But a lot of people that may not know each other here today, so use this as a moment to introduce yourself to people and share the peace of the Lord with those around you. Peace to the Lord, brother. Peace to the Lord. so eager to see each other. We're going to have time for refreshment at the end of the service. Please remain standing. Um, I want to formally introduce to you Charity. She's going to be our worship leader for this new service and the band or the crew. Um, this is our first Sunday with us and we're super excited to have her join uh, the team here at Bethel. Um, she's going to lead us in the next kind of uh, set of, of songs uh, preparing us to receive the word of God here in a minute. So, Charity, it's all yours. Everybody say hi, Charity. Welcome to the We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who ever more will be. Because he opened the prison doors. He parted the raging Oh, 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 shout out your 
be seated. At this time, I invite our kids up to about fifth grade to come on up for children. We're going to send you out in style for Children's Church. So come on up. This window, come, come join Pastor Chris at the front. Come on up. We, and we have Miss Jamie and we have Miss Brianna, our, our helpers. Part of what we're doing with this launch of this new service is to make this a joint venture with our Early Learning Center. So uh, on, the, on the, our Sundays, we're going to be doing this. Brianna's already with us. We, Miss Jamie, who's one of our pre-K teachers, is also going to do this. And so we're going to, we got reinforcements for Children's Church. Now, you guys that come to ELC Chapel, you know this song. I'm going to teach you guys a song. Hudson, you want to come help me? You want to be my helper? Hudson's like my big helper for pre-K. Um, you know, sometimes, kids, we need a little help, right? Like, sometimes we need a little help. So, like today, Miss Brianna and Miss, and so these helpers are going to help you guys uh, with, with Children's Church. And, and, and then, don't, don't help me break the, the, the remote, because I can do that all by myself, Hudson. So, Hudson's going to help me teach you guys a song. So, got kids, stand up. And it's, it's, now... This is a major letdown. You just got to hear these beautiful voices. Now you got to hear my voice, which is not so beautiful. But one of the highlights of my week every week is to do children's church with the kids. And we learn songs. And I got helpers like Hudson. We're going to teach them the King of the Jungle song. Can you help me do that, Hudson? All right. So we put our hands out. The, the, the song goes, who is the king of the jungle? Who is the king? And then we do, ooh, ooh. And then king of the sea. Put your, put your hand, like, like you're swimming. Above, 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 who is the king of the, remember, universe, and who is the king of me? And you'll figure it out, okay? So just play along, all right. So we go, one, two, three. Who is the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who is the king of the sea? Above, 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 who is the king of the universe? And who is the king of me? And we're going to say real loud, we're going to spell Jesus. His name is... J E S U S Jesus. He is the king of me. He is the king of the universe, the jungle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, come on, guys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the sea of 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 of. All right, give these guys a hand. Head on out to Children's Church and this this way. Sorry, that, that way, guys. That, that way, that way, there you go. Go on, Children's Church. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So we all need a little help from time to time, right? We all need a little help from time to time. Even just simply pulling off this worship service. I have to have helpers for communion. We have to have singers because you don't want me singing. That was all the singing you want to hear from me. We, we all need help from time to time, right? We all need help. So maybe now... This is going to date some of us in this service, but maybe you've seen this before. A little reminder of help. You guys know where that's from? Some of you, some of you younger guys are like, who are those weird looking guys up there? Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, when I was younger, so much younger than today. And help can come in a variety of forms. And actually, sometimes our attempts to help actually make it worse. When have you ever helped, have you ever helped someone and actually made it worse? Like you attempted to help? That's usually a lot of way, a lot of my home fix-it projects kind of go that way. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna save some money, I'm gonna help myself and do this project myself, and then $2,000 later, it's like, no, not so much. Um, so something kind of like this, you know, help right here. When you have no idea what's going on, but you still try to help. I mean, even the dog is pushing the car that, 
I think it's going to be there a while, but you know how that goes. I, I have a funny story. Well, not so funny. This is kind of confession time. We all confess before we go to the table. So here's my confession time. In middle school, we had a snow day in Texas, which really, those don't happen very often. And I, we were having a slumber party at one of my friend's house. And we thought it would be really funny if we wrote the word help in the snow in the front yard until the SWAT team showed up at my friend's house. They thought it was a distress signal. We were just like, oh, this will be fun. And we were hiding in the closet, like, you know. Um, so needless to say, my friend's parents were not amused. They, they did not find the, the humor in that at all. So help, kind of, you know, it's kind of the, you know, the, the boy who yelled help, right? And, and then there was no real need. So help is one of those things that we got to be careful how we use the word help. You see, Jesus knew that his disciples were going to need help. Last week in our, in our church calendar, we, we celebrated the ascension where Jesus went up into heaven. Today on Pentecost, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the, those first disciples that day. And then also that same gift that we have today. But the, the, the passage I want to focus on today is Jesus predicting that? Like, have you ever anticipated help, right? You know, like someone tells you, you're going to need this. As parents, we do that with our kids. You're going to need this knowledge someday. It may not make a whole lot of sense right now, but someday down the line, you're going to be glad that I told you this or taught you this or kind of told you this life skill. Sometimes the help we need comes before we're completely ready to receive it. But Jesus, on the night, you know, that we call Monday, Thursday, the night that he was betrayed the night of all that happened in that, the night that he washed his disciples' feet, the night that he gave them the, the, that very first communion. He was instructing them as to what's going to happen next. Think about your own life. Think about maybe college or a time of preparatory, like if you were going to a trade school or something like that. You're gaining all this knowledge, right? Because think about it. Jesus is with his disciples about three and a half years. That's about the length of a college or a high school. And at, at the, at the, their time for graduation was coming. And then if you want, Pentecost was like their graduation from discipleship school. And he knew that he wasn't going to be with them for the next phase of their life. To take that all that knowledge that they had learned and to apply it. He knew they were going to need help. So he promised them help. And so the readings that we have today is from John chapter 14. We have the few Bibles in front of you. The words will obviously be on the screen. It's on page 901 of the Bibles that we have in front of you. This is Jesus promising his disciples a little bit of help. He says this, Jesus answered them, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken you, to you a while, I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance, all that I have said to you. Peace, he says peace. Peace I leave you with my peace I give it to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father and the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you. Basically, your instructions are almost over. For the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me. So that the world may know that I love the Father, rise and let us go from here. You see, the disciples knew, Jesus knew the disciples were going to need a lot of help. He had just 
He was going to commission them to go to the world and be, make disciples. He was going to commission them to be his witnesses to the very ends of the earth. If you've ever been like on a mission trip or ever been to a place where you're commissioned to do something like that, you know there's a lot of help needed into that. Imagine getting this first mission, going into the world that's not ready for you. And Jesus says some very specific things that he, they're going to need help with. First of all, he says, I'm leaving you. You're going to need help. You're not going to have me anymore. And we know throughout Jesus' ministry, he gets, he's hard on these guys. Like he, one time he throws up his hands and says, how much longer am I going to have to put up with you? I'm sure our parents could have said that about each of us at one time or another, or maybe a college professor like, really? You know, it's training someone up is not easy. And he, he said that, you know, I'm not going to need you anymore. He, they're going to need help remembering. He says, remembering the words I've given you, remembering what the father has taught you. You're going to need help remembering these things. And we, you know, we do the same thing, right? We, the things that we were taught, then finally, oh, that's why I learned that. That's why that knowledge is there. Yeah, he remembered, he, the remembering. He said that you're going to need help not being troubled. He says, do not be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, the work, the task that Jesus had for them was going to involve a lot of fear. You know, 10 of these 11 men are going to end up dying martyrs' death, you know, for the sake of the gospel. There's going to be a lot of fear in that. There's going to be a lot of fear in going to towns and villages where people don't want to hear the good news of Jesus, and yet you're called to give that to them. There's going to be a lot of fear in that. There's going to be a lot of fear in taking on this mission, and yet, so he reminds them. You're going to need help overcoming your fear. You're going to need help overcoming your troubled hearts. You're going to need help believing that, that, that this is really going to happen, that this promise of this, of this helper is coming. You're going to need help to, when that day comes, to remember and act boldly with the information you have. And then finally, he tells them, you're going to need help because the ruler of this world, the enemy, is also coming. You're going to face resistance every step of the way as you go. And you're going to need help overcoming that. You're going to need help knowing, remembering that this ruler of the world has no ultimate power over me. Trusting that. Even as you are going to the lions, wherever that, that you may go for that death. And we are not that different today. We struggle with some of these same issues. We need help remembering. We need help trusting that, that God's word is true. We need help not being afraid. We need help not so that our hearts will not be troubled at times of anxiety. How much help have you needed in the last two years going through a pandemic? And knowing that, not knowing what the next day may look like. Not knowing if your job is going to be there. Not knowing. You know, we, we need help remembering that God is working towards us. We need help believing. And just like those disciples on that day of Pentecost, Jesus is not here. Now, he, we, we believe as Lutherans, he, came, he comes in, the, in, in some miraculous way that we can't explain in, in, in communion, but Day to day, Jesus isn't here to instruct us. So we also need help. We cannot live out our faith. We cannot serve him and we cannot serve each other and love each other the way that we should without help. We all need help. So what we celebrate this Pentecost day is that our helper has arrived. The promised help from God, the Holy Spirit, has arrived. And he says, this helper is going to give you peace. And that's peace with each other. That's why we share the peace. But it's also peace, a reconciliation to the Father, to God. 
and recognizing that man, this world needs a lot of peace right now. The enemy is real, right? The enemy is real. I mean, look, look at what happened in Baldi last week. Whether you, however you feel about that politically, it's a, a sharp reminder that there is an enemy out there. There is evil in this world. That evil needs to be confronted. And that, that, that the Holy Spirit, the helper, is the one that helps them do that. So what we celebrate, we're not reading the Pentecost story today, but I encourage you to do that, you know, to read, to read the first couple of chapters of Acts and, and read this amazing event that happens when, when the Holy Spirit, which is kind of represented this wind and the wind chimes that we have up there and, and this miraculous outpouring of language to the point where Everybody thinks the disciples are drunk when they start talking all these different languages. And, 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 and Peter steps up boldly and said, no, it's not spirits. It's the spirit. You can laugh. That wasn't a pun. I mean, give me a little bit there. You know, no, it was a really bad pun. But anyways, yeah. So they, they and, and what, what's awesome about this story is that they did believe. They stepped up to the plate when this, when this outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened in their lives. They remembered what Jesus had told them that night, and they were ready. And thousands of people came to know Jesus that day because they were ready. They, they took to heart what he had told them. So the helper arrived for them on Pentecost, and because of that helper, they did literally go to the ends of the earth um, to spread the good news about Jesus and what I want to close with today is this reminder for you and me today. We have access to that same helper, that same Holy Spirit who poured into the disciples on Pentecost, the same Holy Spirit who led Paul and, and all those, and Peter and all those guys to, to, to face unbelievable challenges, way beyond anything any of us will probably ever face in our lifetime is there. We have access to that same Holy Spirit. So we as a church and we as individuals try to wrestle, what does it mean to be the church coming out of COVID? What does it mean to for, for a church and an early learning center to work together? What does it mean to, to, to be a place that has worship in three different languages and four different expressions of, of faith? We have access to that same helper. That same Holy Spirit is guiding us. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be anxious. Jesus said what to them? Rejoice. On that day when the Holy Spirit comes, celebrate, rejoice. And, and, and it's beautiful to see this many people here singing out and shouting our praises and rejoicing that the Holy Spirit has come. Because Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not about us. It's about God Fulfilling his promise, you see, because the helper has arrived. And until Jesus returns, that helper will continue to be there to guide each of us as we live out this thing we call faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer up a prayer, and then I'm going to invite the, uh, the praise team to come up for a follow-up song. Dear God, we thank you for this, this day, for this chance to, to, to gather together. We, um, you are the one who promised a helper. You promised your spirit to come and guide us. You promised Pentecost, and it did happen. And it happened that day over 2,000 years ago, and it continues to happen each day when people understand and, and respond in faith to the work that you did. Help us to remember that this day is not about us. It's about you, a God who fulfills his promise, a God that sends his son to die for the sins of the world, but also sends his spirit so that we may live out that faith and share the good news with others. In your son's name, amen. Church, let's go and let's stand together as we respond to the Holy Ghost.
attention to your spirit who does live in us because our helpful helper has arrived god we thank you that you continue to pour out your spirit on those that trust in you we pray for healing for those that that we named before us before leah for mark for donna for ann for cindy uh, we pray that you know, the, the continued partnership between our church and our early learning center and, and the ways that, that you are working in our lives. Uh, we thank you for all the people that are gathered here today, both live here in, in person and, and, and through the live stream. 
We pray for Olivia, for Marilyn, for Katie, for David, for Mel, for Sharon, for Cindy, for Michelle, for Jack, for Kenneth, for Mark, for Mary, for John, for Risa, for Ruth, for Sean, for Kevin, and for Ruth, and for all those that we name in our own hearts. We pray all these things in your son's name, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned, the other, the other part that we do is we come to the table as we confess our sin. We acknowledge our own brokenness, our own need of the forgiveness of sins. In our, in our text this morning, Jesus reminded the disciples to not be afraid, yet be honest. When was the last time you were afraid of something? And when was the last time you were afraid of something and it, and it ended up not being anything at all? So we confess to God that sometimes we let fear overtake us. We don't remember. We don't trust. We, we, we forget that we have the helper, the Holy Spirit, to guide us. So take a moment and reflect on that. What, what's, what's a fear that you could bring before God this day? Friends, I have good news. <clears throat> I'm here to announce to you that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, we have a, an amazing crowd today. We're so glad you're all here. Um, after I do the words of institution, the communion helpers will come forward. We'll have two serving rows, so you can go on both sides. There's a couple different ways you can partake in communion. You can um, just simply take the wafer and, and, and eat it, and then you, you can have either the... the, the the common cup or the individual cup, or there's a, there's a, a, a practice called intention where you just take the, the wafer and you dip it into the, into the chalice and you can receive it that way as well. So it was on the night of his betrayal, the same night that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit that he told, comforted his disciples in their time of anxiety he, he gathered with them for the common meal. They all knew the Passover meal. He broke the bread. He gave to them saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant of your blood poured out by my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you eat and drink this in remembrance of me. Our statement of belief, what we believe about the, the Lord's Supper is, is printed in the bulletin. We, we do invite anyone to come forward to receive uh, the body and blood of Jesus. Or if you prefer or have not been instructed yet, if you prefer to, re to receive a blessing, just put your hands like this in the, and we will uh, give you a blessing as well. So taste, come, taste and see that the Lord is good.
pray that eating and drinking of Christ's very own body and blood, strengthen and preserve you this day forward. Depart from this table and from this time of gathering in his peace. Amen. And we continue with our dismissal song. So we thank you for being, but we absolutely thank you for being here. Just want to make a couple of quick announcements on the last page of your bulletin and some of the exciting things happening here. Um, the next relaunch, like next soft launch of this service, obviously you're invited to come any Sunday, but when, when Charity and the whole team will be here is the 26th. And the night before that, we have a wine and art auction that some, some of, several of you are part of the, the committee for that. And we've already sold over 60 tickets. To the, to the auction. So the joint event, um, we're going to be auctioning off wine, obviously, and, and works of art. So uh, it, you, there's a table where you can buy tickets for that. 
There's refreshments for everyone, coffee and drinks and, and snacks for the kiddos. So do, do take some time to, to continue the fellowship because this new service that we're launching in August isn't just about worship and singing. It's about creating community, creating for children, for youth and for families to gather um, together. So um, we thank you so much for being here. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.